Hi, it's Kirsten and Jörg. Today we want to show you how we make tea sandwiches and sausage rolls for a casual picnic. Sausage rolls? Yes. I'm already getting hungry. <laughs> so let's do this. And it's been a while that Jörg and I filmed in this kitchen. Yeah, that's why we're doing it again today. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to filming with you today. Yes. And yeah, Jörg said he's he's so looking forward to it as well because afterwards I get something to eat. <laughs> yeah. So we will be making three kinds of tea sandwiches: yeah. cucumber, carnation mm. chicken, and the other one is called egg watercress. And we will be making um, sausage rolls again. Yeah, sausage rolls. So my favorite. Yeah. So we're starting with cucumber. So for the cucumber sandwiches, you need toast, of course. And this is just regular toast, no gluten-free, because it would be too much food. So this is brown toast, then fresh mint, fresh chives, some soft cheese, cucumber, and salt. Take about two to three tablespoons of cream cheese. Take some herbs, chives, and then just combine it well. going to use some more mint because Jörg and I really love it and it's such I think the mint is really nice here because it tastes so fresh now spread onto your toast or bread This smells delicious. And now put it on a plate and Jörg will add the cucumber now. So Jörg is doing the delicate job and you're using a potato peeler because it's just easier, isn't it? Yeah. Then you get fine slices. So and now I'm just gonna put that on. Yeah, and I think a, a potato peeler is the best way. Yeah, because then it's really fine. Yeah. And do you know, when I think of cucumber sandwiches, <laughs> I always think of Oscar Wilde. Yes. And the film... The, the importance of being honest. Exactly. Yes. You know in, what? Yeah, because in the opening scene, mm -hmm. there are a lot of cucumber sandwiches. Yes. I have an idea for tonight. I think I would love to watch the film. And I've never told you, Rupert Everett, I'm obsessed with, with his voice. He has such a beautiful voice and the film with him and Colin Firth is one of our favourite films. Yeah. And now, sprinkle with a little bit of salt and then it's nearly done. Now, the final touches. This is a bit of a delicate job because I have to remove the crust to make tea sandwiches or so-called finger sandwiches as well. So it's best to use a knife like this. Makes the job a little bit easier. Of course you don't necessarily have to remove the crust but this is just the British way. This is how you would get them when you have afternoon tea. So they are not perfect but since this is for a picnic, a casual picnic, it's fine. And now I'm cutting them into triangles. Looks like this. Sandwich number one, done. We're going to give it a try now. 
Mm. I think this is probably not the the best bread. Mm. Good. The mint. The mint is amazing. Very minty. I'm already looking forward to our sausage rolls because they will be gluten free. And I'm going to make the egg and watercress sandwiches and I'm only allowed to smell because it's not gluten free. For the egg watercress sandwich you need fresh chives, fresh watercress, if you can't get them just use regular cress, then a boiled egg, mayonnaise, mustard, and yeah, we're going to use German mustard. Yes, we do. <laughs> German mustard, then, of course, you could use British mustard, whatever, and salt and pepper. Yeah, you can also use French mustard. Oh, yes. To be honest with you, they make great mustard. Yeah. So I'm mashing the egg first, and the recipe says don't over mash. So just a little bit. That looks good now. Okay. Now add a tablespoon of mayonnaise. And it says a quarter of a teaspoon. But yeah. Yeah, yep. that's good. Okay. And now combine well. Now I'm going to add the chives. Chives and a little bit of salt and pepper. Again, super quick. And some spreadable first. Yuck and I just said, of course it's easier to go to the shop and buy a sandwich like that, but I don't know. We just prefer it that way. And at the end of the day, it's not a lot of work, is it? No. Top with a little bit of watercress. And now, your favourite, Jörg. Yeah, coronation chicken. Could you say why it is your favourite? It's just tasty. <laughs> Simple I mean, as it is. Yeah, I think it, it definitely is. It's wonderful. Yeah. And you will see the ingredients in a second, but I think it's probably like the, the combination of curry powder and chutney yeah. makes it a bit exotic it's maybe. It's just delicious. It is. You have to try it. Yes. And here is what you need. So, for the coronation chicken sandwich, you need cooked chicken breast, of course. And before we forget, we will put the recipes down below in the info box. And then you need mango chutney, of course, curry powder, mayonnaise, then some plain white yogurt, and a bit of fresh watercress. What you have to do is cut the chicken breast into small pieces. Yeah. Like, or shred it. And because we only make a small amount, you... Yeah, I'm using only half of it. Yeah. It just depends on how many people you are. Okay, now I'm adding one tablespoon of yogurt. Mm -hmm. One tablespoon of mayonnaise. Curry. And Jörg always takes a bit more because he. Really I like curry. You <laughs> yeah. don't like you don't like the too taste too too, too curryish. <laughs> I love curry, but not too much. And then mango chutney. Yes, this is probably the the best. I think I really love that. I always take a bit more of chutney, to be honest. You take more curry, I take more chutney. And then just simply mix it together. Yeah. And as you can see, it's so easy. This is why we never buy it. We just make it fresh. 
And for this, we use a bit of spreadable Le Pack, or just regular butter, whatever you prefer. And as far as I know, Coronation Chicken was created for the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. And whenever you go for afternoon tea, we've been many times and you always get coronation chicken, always. Yeah. It's like a staple here. And top with a little bit of watercress and then you have your coronation chicken sandwich. And you just said that you can work better with a different knife, right? Yes. So that's the funny thing. Like I watched some YouTube tutorials where they said, you have to use this knife. And Jörg said, for him it's rubbish. It's so strange. Do you have the knife, that one? Yes. So yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think it's just because it's sharper. So again, remove the crust, cut some triangles, and then enjoy. And the good thing is you can prepare these sandwiches like a day ahead of your picnic. And now, one of my favorite things to eat, sausage rolls. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and I, I get something to eat yes. now as well. Yes. And do you remember? <laughs> Some said you should try sausage sausage rolls everywhere we go. Yes, I, the, how would you call it? The sausage roll guide to Britain. <laughs> or something like that. Well, so this is what you need. It's not very complicated. So you need a puff pastry, and we are using gluten-free puff pastry. Then, of course, sausages. These ones have Bramley apple which we really like, and also because it works so beautifully with the dried apricots. Then you need fresh sage, an egg, a shallot, and sesame seeds. And now just remove the meat from the sausages and put into a bowl. And now add the shallot, and then the dry apricots, the sage, and mix it all together. And now you just roll out the pastry a little bit. Cut two halves. So now I'm placing the sausage meat simply in, in the, the middle, middle of the each pastry. Yeah. Yes. So I've just beaten an egg and put in a drop of milk. Brush one side of the pastry so it sticks together nicely. And now fold over. Now use a fork to see the edges. Now, if you like, you can put them in the oven, in the oven as a whole. Mm -hmm. But what I do is, I'm going to cut them in pieces now. Yeah. Because sometimes when you do it afterwards, you crush the whole pastry. I think last time we made them, yeah. we cut them afterwards. Yeah. But yeah, we can do it like that now. This is according to the recipe, I think. Yeah. And now that goes into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes, yeah? Yeah. yeah. At 180 degrees Celsius. And again, we also put this recipe down below in the info box. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> I just came downstairs. What? What are you doing? I'm trying the sausage rolls. And they are really good. They're full of flavour. Mm. <laughs> I need to try one as well. No, that's just... Ah. Ah. <laughs> Yolk tempted me. You know what? I think they are better than the 
the ones we made three months ago. Remember when we went yeah. on a walk? Yeah, I really good. This is, honestly, you can't compare this to the ones you buy at the supermarket. It's just incredibly good. And in case you're surprised, we just cleaned the kitchen while the sausage rolls were in the oven, so it's not magic. Bon appetit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. We have tiles. So good. And now that you've seen what kind of food we take with us, we thought we would also share what else we bring. And yeah, most of the things we've had for ages. And before we forget, we always bring a very nice lemonade on a picnic. And although these sandwiches are called tea sandwiches that you often have for afternoon tea, we bring lemonade on a picnic. And this one is very good. Classic rose lemonade. We can highly recommend it. And then, of course, we pack everything in this picnic basket. And we got some questions on our recent video. And, you know, we've had that for so long. I think this one is at least 20 years old. So you need a nice basket or, yeah, whatever you have at home. And then we have an extra picnic blanket that we bought some years ago. And we have these, how do you pronounce it? Mel melamine? I think you know what, what I mean. So these two cups, very old, very, very old. And this is something we got recently. And it has the name Indian Tiffin. So it's three, three tiers and it's really, really good. So you can use that and just store your sausage rolls in there, like so, and use another to for a couple of sandwiches, and it just keeps it very fresh and nice. And if that's not enough space, which can happen easily, we use beeswax, how do you call it? Wrapping? Beeswax wrapping. And this is very, well, environmentally friendly. You don't have any waste. So we just take a couple of sausage rolls or three sausage rolls and wrap them. And you can also use some ribbon. So we sometimes use ribbon, so you get an idea. And then you can just take everything home with you and use it again. And the beeswax, you just you just have to wash it with like warm water and then it's clean again. So, And we also take some paper napkins and that's it. So it's really, really good. It's not, there's no real waste. So... We really like that. And we forgot something very important because we live in the UK. So, depending on the weather, you might need a parasol for the picnic when it's very sunny, which would be nice. Or, if you want to be well prepared, it's a good idea to also bring an umbrella. Ready for a picnic? Mm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure because today the weather is a bit strange. Now it's sunny. Five minutes later there's a bit of rain so we will probably enjoy the sandwiches here in the kitchen. Yeah, but they're still delicious. They are. They're still really good. We hope you enjoyed the video and I always, I don't know, things like that always make me realise how easy it is to make. Yeah. It's just 
Well, you need a bit of time, but it's not that much time. When you're not filming, it's honestly, it's so quick. Yeah. And, and fresh. They're really good. They are. And yeah, we hope we'll see you again very soon. And until next time. Yeah, take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.